Oh yeah, the question I already had in the Facebook group as well from uh, Bennett Cohen. Has there been an increase in the number of younger men who seem to need TRT? He's a nice guy, Dr. Cohen. I like him. He's a pretty active member of the group and I've had some chats with him. So thanks for asking. Yes, unfortunately, uh, we have seen the age of the patient demographic that comes into the clinic seeking help drop. Now, you can look at it in a two-faceted approach. First, you could say the attention given to testosterone as a result of social media and groups like ours, combined with the popularity of fitness, bodybuilding, and aesthetics as a result of social media like Instagram, has spiced up significantly the interest of younger and younger crowds to go out and seek performance enhancement. So that is a one-faceted approach to look at why younger people are now seeking treatment. I try to not count those metrics and not just say, are younger people coming in? Because again, they could be coming in for the wrong reasons. I like to say, are younger people actually getting treatment because they need it? And that's the unfortunate part. The answer there is, again, yes. So what we're noticing is that there is a decline in hormone levels in men who are younger and younger and younger. And this is a continuing trend. I attribute this to a more toxic environment in the form of inferior nutrition, inferior and sedentary lifestyle habits as a result of technological advances. When I was a kid, Steve, you and I are probably a year or two apart. We're, we're both mid forties. When we were kids, you come home from school, you drop your books, and you're outside until it's either dark or your mom grabs you by the hair and drags you in. You're playing ball. You're riding your bike. You're picking fights. You're doing what, what kids do. You're out. You're out of the house and you're active. And I look at my kids today and they're glued to their iPads and their laptops and their phones and their TikTok and all these other things. So if you look at the way people are living their life today, sitting in a chair, uh, this is primarily the result. It's a lifestyle and dietary approach. And a, you know, you got to also consider the fact that, you know, as I sit here right now, there's probably 15 or 20 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth networks going in and out of my brain. This didn't exist 25 years ago. This will impact your pituitary function, your thyroid function. This is radiation at low doses, chronically and constantly. Okay, so we can't escape the world, but we do need to adapt. And unfortunately, you're going to continue to see younger and younger generations as it becomes more mainstream seeking treatment. It pains me to see, but it's a fact. So it's a good question. And I'm glad that we addressed it because I think that when the whole medical community starts to wake up to this fact, uh, things are going to probably start getting a little bit better in the form of testosterone treatment. Right now, it's still looked at as a taboo, but uh, the necessity is growing and it's, it's unfortunate, but it's there.